I believe it was um, the Buddha said, when you look at a flower, you do not see a self. There is no self in the flower. But when you look at the flower, you can see the sun and the rain and the stars. the earth, but there is no self. Or look at all these trees around us, same thing. They're not struggling to be. If you take that flower, you take those trees and you were to take away the sun, do they exist? No. If you were to take away all that is in the tree or in that flower, take away the sun, take away the rain, take away the earth, it does not exist. It has no existence. And so, so the Buddha taught that if you to take all that away, he said that the flower, the, what, the properties of the flower are non-flower or non-self. And the same thing is true with your body and mind. Now who you truly are, who we truly are, is that non-self that's filling that body and mind. That body and mind are interdependent upon everything. If you were to take away the sun, take away the rain, is there a body? No. Body can, does not live without the sun, does it? Can that live without the rain? And so everything that is that body is non-self. It's non-body, non-mind. What you're doing is you're learning to bring the mind and the body together so that it can be present in union and in peace with everything else that is in that body and mind. Because it's the idea of self or the belief of self that interferes or causes you to feel as if there's some separation between you and the tree or you and the sun. It's just a belief. The mind can go on thinking of the non-existent future. And it's off in 10 years from now, dreaming and daydreaming, going off on all these things. And There's nothing wrong with this, but Is it aware at all of the present moment? Is it aware at all of the breath? It's not even aware in that moment of what's fueling its ability to daydream. But if you were to take away the breath, could you daydream? That's why, that's why um, m the breath is so important to mindfulness. Without the breath, there is no mind. Without the breath, there is no body. It's not work. The practice of Sitting meditation or conscious breathing is not work. It's, it's, or it's training of sorts, but it's not work. It's a practice, but it's not work. It's not meant to be laborsome. It's quite the opposite. The more you practice, the more not only effortless it becomes, but the more ecstatic it becomes. I was, you know, I think to 
10 years ago, I would just, if I didn't feel present, if I didn't feel the ecstasy of being alive, I would stop, I would stop everything. I was practicing these things that I'm teaching you now, then I would stop everything. And take a deep breath. And I would just feel the ecstasy of the moment flood back in. And I would feel all of my cells re-energized in the present. Re-energized by the breath, my mind and body being in the same place. I was alive again. We're only alive in the present. Truly only alive in the present. So if you see it this way, you'll never see it as work again. It will, it, it'll, it'll cease from being hard. When every breath is meant to be, bring an ecstasy or a high, well then, connect with it in that way. Touch the moment deeply in that way. That's what it means to be alive. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. Give us a thumbs up, comment, thoughts, questions in the section below. Let us know what you want to hear from us. Subscribe to our channel for more life-changing content. And as always, check the section below for our website, for live events, where we'll be, what we're up to, more about us, and our online school website is listed below as well. We love you. We're glad you're here. We want to hear from you. We're in this with you.